The 2010 election saw a kind of a bit of a sea change in, in focus that was building up to it before then, uh, from a view that government could spend its way out of recession, that we saw in Britain that view, and to, to kind of concerns that had been expressed elsewhere in the world that uh, with government spending more to try and get out of recession, but less tax revenue come in, we were witnessing a growing level of government borrowing. We've seen this in Greece, most famously, um, but we've also seen it in the United States and, and, and most of the uh, Western uh, economies. And um, the kind of economic theory that was behind it was this idea of the crowding out effect. And the coalition government got elected in 2010. When they were talking about the need to bring down government borrowing, their language was that very much, and it was one that they were getting advice from economists, was that it would be the private sector that would bring about recovery, that investments, businesses would create the new jobs, the new business startups. And there was a view also that it would be these very same private companies that would innovate, that would invest in the new technology, new green technology to bring about a, a, a recovery, a sustained recovery, you know, genuine economic growth in the long term. Um, now again, it comes back to this idea of the crowding out effect. It's a really useful tool for A2 economics. Um, and it kind of is useful because it touches on fiscal. You heard me talking there about uh, the need to curb government borrowing. Uh, but it gets you into some supply side views. I mean, it is very much a supply side argument. And it overlaps with monetarism as well. Now this is the, one of the ways of interpreting it, which is the public sector net cash requirements, which is another way of saying public sector borrowing, that, that government spending uh, is greater than the tax revenue being raised. The government's having to every year borrow money, gets added to the national debt, which means that the government's having to fund that national debt, so it might um, issue government bonds um, with a, a rate of interest to pay off, so you get interest on the national debt as well. So, you know, demand for those you know, they're basically borrowing, they're demanding money off the money markets um, to, to be able to um, borrow money to meet the shortfall between the government spending and the tax revenue. Um, so, you know, they're, they're going to the banks and saying, are you interested in buying our, our government bonds, you know, for example. Uh, and this kind of gets this loanable funds theory, where here you've got the rate of interest. Here I'm really talking about long term rates of interest, it's, um, you know, if the government's issuing a government bond, um, they're looking to borrow money, a kind of a certificate, they're looking to borrow that money off uh, an institution like the bank, for maybe say like a 10 year period plus interest. Um, so we're looking at long term interest rates here, now let's just say they're at 4%, here you've got the demand for loanable funds, the supply of loanable funds. Now if a big player like the government is persistently having large uh, government uh, deficits, budget deficits, is having to borrow money, then obviously the demand for loanable funds will be shifting out to the right. And the consequence of, of this movement is that the interest rate on long-term interest uh, rates will go up. So say that they, they go up to 10%. The consequence of this, of course, is marginal efficiency of capital. Again, the rate of interest here, levels of investment, or what we also call gross fixed capital formation. Um, so here's the marginal efficiency of investment schedule, or marginal efficiency of capital. And if you're going to say that long-term interest rates, you know, business is thinking, shall we open uh, a, a new brand new uh, shop um, or build a new factory shall we invest in new technology uh, you know refit our factory with the latest robots well they'll be put off because they'll think if we're going to get this for borrowing money we were borrowing at four percent now we're borrowing at ten percent so no surprise investment levels collapse I suppose it also is issues that are worth thinking about, just evaluatively. Um, how else, does, what else decides whether business invests? Confidence, profitability, um, these sorts of issues. 
And um, yeah, there's a big criticism here, isn't there, which is to say that is the, is the private sector genuinely being crowded out? Has this already happened? Because businesses, business confidence is just so low at present, the customers aren't coming in and not forecast to come in for a while. Um, you know, we may already be here. Uh, so there's a strong criticism of this loanable funds theory. But that, that's essentially it. That the increase in government expenditure raises rates of interest, long-term interest rates, and this kills off investment. Now, that is disputed, like I said. Um, there is, there's that kind of view there, which is to say, well, without the private sector, without business confidence happening, you know, the government needs to step in and do something. Um, so so that, that's the critique of it. But there is a, another view here, which is well, which is to do with the Monetary Policy Committee, which is to say that the Monetary Policy Committee, of course, and their interest rate decisions are looking as to what else is happening in the economy. Now, for the Monetary Policy Committee for the last few years, uh, kind of 2010 to 2012, they were failing to get inflation on target. Inflation was supposed to be 2%. They were getting inflation above 3%. Um, and and there's, there's an issue there, which is to say that for the Monetary Policy Committee, if the government continues to spend money, maybe that's going to cause demand pull inflation to stay high. So the actions of the government to say, no, we're curbing spending, we're looking to you, the Monetary Policy Committee, then, um, to have the flexibility to keep interest rates low, to, to encourage investment uh, in the private sector recovery. So there's that view as well. There's also, finally, a very simplistic view, which is to say, where the government steps back, the private sector steps in. So if the government steps back and no longer running a national health hospital like in Cambridge, well a private company will take it over. Or if the government doesn't provide training to help the unemployed into work, private firms will pay private companies to help retrain unemployed people to be suitable to be hired. Which again is something that's been a view uh, and that's some evidence in the United States. I mean that's it, that's, that's essentially the crowding out effect. It's got fiscal policy, um, curb government borrowing, it's got a supply side bias which is that you know investment will, will actually shift the potential output, will achieve uh, the PPF shifting out, the long run aggregate supply curve shifting out, will achieve genuine economic growth and there's the monetarist view there as well as we engage with decisions on interest rates, be it in the marketplace or the Bank of England setting the base rate of interest.